Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. We've talked a lot about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's deal with Spotify, or should I just say Meghan's deal with Spotify since Harry was axed out of the podcast? But now there's news on their deal with Netflix. Big news! Harry and Meghan parted ways with the original director for the Netflix docuseries. Page Six gave the exclusive, saying that they initially hired a different Oscar-nominated director for their Netflix docuseries before they had a falling out with her over the project's vision. Garrett Bradley was the original director who is known for blending cinematic genres to explore the larger socio-political significance of the everyday moments of her subject's lived experiences. She is also the director of the critically acclaimed Netflix series Naomi Osaka. Netflix bosses reached out to Garrett Bradley to direct that show, so her success is probably why Meghan and Harry wanted her. Garrett Bradley won the directing award at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival for her first nonfiction feature, Time, making her the first black woman to win that prize. The film went on to be nominated for Best Documentary Feature at the 2021 Oscars. Garrett's partnership with Meghan and Harry quickly went downhill. Page Six reports that sources said both sides could not agree on the tone of the series, with one industry insider saying, Garrett wanted Harry and Meghan to film at home and they were not comfortable doing that. There were a few sticky moments between them and Garrett left the project. Harry and Meghan's own production company captured as much footage as they could before Liz Garbus was hired. I find it very interesting that they butted heads with Garrett Bradley and then it was Garrett who left the project because they didn't agree on the project's vision. Megan probably wanted to include more episodes of her weaponizing racism and Garrett was probably like, um, not sure that constitutes as racism, but okay. I'm kidding, but you know, for someone who likes to talk about racism a lot, it's definitely something to note when Megan keeps having fallouts with well-accomplished and respected black women in the industry. If you guys recall, we talked about Megan throwing Allison P. Davis, a black journalist, under the bus in her Variety interview. I predict that there's going to be a big scandal with these women coming forth about Megan because something isn't right there. What do you guys think? It's also funny how Meghan and Harry accused the palace of selling out information about them, but they haven't been associated with the palace in a long time, and yet inside tea about them keeps getting exposed. Meghan and Harry also lost several members of staff while living in the UK, and Meghan faced some serious bullying allegations. Their chief of staff, Catherine St. Laurent, who previously worked for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, left their company Archwell after less than a year with them. On Archetypes, Megan said that calling someone the B word, the B word, <laughs> or difficult is often someone else's way to belittle and dismiss a person. But it seems like Megan is the one belittling and dismissing people, or else her staff wouldn't have quit so soon and so suddenly. I'm telling you, it's very telling when there is a track history of people quitting Megan and Harry projects, especially in such a short time. And it's even more telling that the director was on board for the project for a very long time and then she quit in like the midst or towards the end of it. According to another source, this is why Meghan and Harry were spotted with two different film crews on two trips to New York City last year. On the second trip, they were seen with Liz Garbus and her own crew. But it was not all smooth sailing for the Netflix bosses and the Oscar-nominated Liz Garbus, who also clashed with Meghan and Harry over the content of the series. Because according to sources, Meghan and Harry wanted to heavily edit the show. It's also believed they wanted the show pushed back until next year, but Netflix refused and now the show is set to be streamed in early December. You guys already know, I'll be covering it. Page Six reported in October that Meghan and Harry are at odds with Netflix and even their own production team as they backtrack on what they want to show the public in their upcoming docuseries. Apparently, they wanted to cut chunks from the doc, which they have been filming for more than a year now, but Netflix chiefs are standing by the filmmakers who want to keep the content. Harry and Meghan are having second thoughts on their own story, on their own project, a Netflix source told Page Six. 
According to another industry source, they said that Harry and Meghan are panicked about trying to tone down even the most basic language, but it's their story from their own mouths. I don't think they're panicked about the basic language. I think that they're scared people are going to see right through them. And maybe there is truth to the rumors that they are separating or leading separate lives behind the scenes. After all, Harry was just spotted in Hawaii by himself in a suit, so it's not like he was trying to go incognito. But people are saying that's also for the Netflix series, so let's see if there's truth to that. Page Six also previously revealed how Meghan and Harry wanted to edit the show following Queen Elizabeth's death because they're apparently exposing truth bombs involving King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla, as well as the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Catherine. Now, this is very interesting because if Meghan and Harry want to back away from this project or even have it shelved as long as possible, it begs the question, what does the project expose? And does the docu-series reflect badly on Meghan and Harry? You know, if they had solid tea they were going to provide, I'm sure that Meghan, more than anyone, would be counting down the seconds to release it and continue her revenge vendetta against the royal family. So why are they so scared now? If you guys recall in Meghan's Variety interview, which I covered, I spoke about Meghan feeling nervous that the story is being told from someone else's lens, she said. Even though the job of a director is to show the story as truthful and realistic as possible, but I guess that's Meghan's problem. Both Meghan and Harry aren't known to tell the truth, and that often backfires on them. Netflix isn't allowing them to shelf the project any longer, especially since they want to debut it after season 5 of The Crown premieres to make the most out of the drama. Sources are even reporting that King Charles is waiting to see what is exposed in the docuseries and that will supposedly impact his decision on whether or not Archie and Lilibet, Meghan and Harry's kids, get titles. What do you guys think about that? Now, as you guys know, royal titles aren't automatically granted like Meghan and Harry's PR agenda tried to push, and I made an entire detailed video about that, so go check it out. There are now calls for King Charles to strip Meghan and Harry of their titles, considering the fact that they're still using them in the most bizarre ways possible. Meghan, who is posing as a British royal, is signing off her messages and urging Americans to vote. And it's like, why are we letting someone who is using a British royal title to elevate her status get involved in American politics? If she functioned as a private citizen, then sure girl, do whatever you want. But she's throwing around the Duchess of Sussex title no matter where she is and it's kind of disrespectful and unprofessional as she's trying to steer people in a country while using a different country's royal title. Us Americans don't care about the title. In November 2021, Meghan was dragged as it was exposed that she had been cold calling US senators on their private numbers and using her royal title while lobbying them. Senator Shelley Moore Capito said that she was driving when a call came from a blocked number, which she at the time assumed to be from Democratic holdout Senator John Manchin. Capito tells Politico, a political journalism newspaper company, how the interaction went, and she goes, Senator Capito? This is Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. I couldn't figure out how she got my number, Capito said. That is so embarrassing. Senator Susan Collins told Politico she also got a call from her and said, Much to my surprise, she called me on my private line and she introduced herself as the Duchess of Sussex, which is kind of ironic. At the time, one royal watcher said, Meghan Markle, the American citizen, can call senators all day long. But Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, has no place meddling in US politics. Before I go, let's quickly talk about archetypes for a second. You guys know I cover the podcast weekly with my recap and reviews, and lately, there's been a little scandal. Apparently, Meghan isn't interviewing her guests on her podcast, as Alison Yarrow implies that a producer was interviewing her. Alison's explanations and comments are apparently edited and interwoven between comments from Meghan. Alison Yarrow wrote on Instagram, Cheers to producer Farah Safari, an excellent interviewer. Now, I've listened to the podcast, and let me tell you, the way it's recorded and edited implies that these expert guests are interviewed by Megan herself. Even Megan, who talks about their segment, makes it seem like she speaks to them herself. And if it wasn't something that was purposely implied, then it wouldn't be considered news or something surprising. But it is, with the New York Post talking about it. 
I feel like if Megan interviewed these experts, it would reflect better on her because it would show that she cares about the topic that she's supposedly educating us on. But this feeds the narrative that she just wants to talk to these big name celebrities that she brings on the podcast and that the podcast is something to feed her revenge agenda. Anyway, let's see what's going to happen with the docuseries and what it's going to expose. I have a feeling it's going to be a crazy time for Meghan and Harry with this docuseries and Harry's dramatic memoir Spare set to be released next year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, tell me your thoughts in the comments below, and let me know what other Meghan and Harry topics you want me to cover. Follow us on our social media, like and subscribe for more, and as always, I'll see you next time.